Hey guys, it's you again. I'm back with another video. Uh, this video today, it's gonna be 10 things I don't like about my car. Um, I was thinking about doing 10 different uh, things for uh, just the, the model itself, the car itself, but I couldn't find enough. So I'm gonna do like mix with things that are on this car, like uh, specifically on this car, not just the model. So the first thing they, um, going, the, the, one of the first things I don't like is the, the doors. So I came from my four door, like my previous four cars that I owned, there were four doors. This is my first two door, right? But the only thing I don't like with this car is the doors are long as hell. I don't know if I'm opening right now. It's gonna close itself. But it, they're pretty freaking long. Like, especially here in Japan, it becomes really annoying. Cause when you open the door and there is like a car next to you because the parking lots are here are really small this is like the most i could probably open it and i had to like squeeze out of the car to just let my feet get stuck around right here when i'm trying to like get out um like because this is probably the most the most i can open it but you know it can open a lot but it's just like you can see how long it is the door's gonna close again that's my first one. Just in general, again, like I said, I came back from a nothing but four door car, so it's my first two door car. So that was one. They uh, that that's the main one that I don't like. Just for the fact that the parking lots out here are really small. The second thing, believe it or not, it's gonna be the spoiler or the wing, however you guys, uh, however you guys know it. So for this one, the size is good. You know, I, it's like how it's supposed to be on the GTR, because how the GTR wing. The only thing I don't like of this is like, you know, from the back it looks fine, like perfect size. But whenever you are driving from the inside, which I'm about to show you guys, um, and I'm trying to look back, I can see, I can see the car, I can see part of it. But if you're trying to look back, you won't be able to see who's driving the car, basically. So you know when you can turn, like when you're driving and you look through the mirror or either the car you can see like the car and the driver and with this is with this wing i, I never be I'm, I'm never able to see the driver i can only see the, the bottom part of the car and the roof of the car but all the windshield part it gets covered by the wing that's my second complaint of this car other thing i know this is like a race car or whatever but like i always like to have at least a drink or like a cup of coffee in the morning when i'm going on my way to work and that's my third complaint the cup holder so the cup holder are really small like i can barely feel a cup like it can barely fit on it but no like it doesn't sit all the way down and then it's really small plus i mean i like that you can hide it but when you when you actually trying to use a cup holder it doesn't doesn't fit in all the sizes and if the cups if the cup goes from a small to like you know wider like sometimes it will it will hit right here and it won't be able to uh fit the whole cup that's my or complain about the car uh third thing that i don't like actually just the cap holder itself the fourth thing believe it or not it's my clutch so this one i'm not sure is that that's how they come from the factory or the previous owner did uh, an upgrade like maybe stage two or different type of clutch but the clutch it's uh let me actually show you the clutch it itself it's hard like it's, I had to put way more pressure on it to work. But the crazy thing is that I, I, I came from uh, the previous car I had before this, this one was a Legacy. So the, you know, I got used to the clutch, it was really soft. And then I could just do like something like this and do that and the clutch would work. Not for this one, it has its perfect spot, like the spot about right here to work around with it. And then it won't work and you go a little more down and it will work again. So it has like two or three sweet spots, but it, it's, uh, like I, I usually get used to a clutch within a day driving a car. This one, I already got used to it pretty much, but sometimes it's a sneak in me. They, I will be really close to the stall or, or, or I will look like a beginner. So I had to pre put more gas than normal than you will do in a regular car. Cause all, all my previous cars that I had are stick and this one, it's something else. This is like something different. All of the previous cars that I had, they were pretty similar on the clutch and the gas this one is a whole different thing the clutch the clutch itself you have to like ride on the clutch a little bit longer and press the gas a little harder in order for it to work there are times that i take off smooth there is times that the car jumps a little bit and then fucking makes me look like a beginner i actually stole the car twice already 
for something really small and um yeah that bothers me a lot because it makes me look like a beginner when i've been driving a stick shift for about five years now and it just it's it, it just a clutch it's something else the gas is about the same but the clutch with the gas combined is it's, it's a little bit different the fifth thing that i don't like it's on the differential actually i don't know much about drifting you know i like watching videos of people drifting and shit but like me myself i don't i don't know anything about drifting right so when i first got the car whenever you did like take like really short or really like small turns and like instead of taking a wide turn you take like a really really short one oh like we're just just by the time when i'm trying to park because i always like to back up when i'm parking the car makes like a clocking noise and it jumps a little bit and at the beginning like when i first you know the first time i do drove the car i freaked out i was like I think something is broken on this shit, you know? But I met some people that actually like know about drifting, like drifting, and I explained them exactly the exactly how like you know how it sounded and some some people actually like like before I even told the problem they hear my, my car when I was uh parking and apparently what it has is called a LSD for and the differential which is like limited LSD, I can't fucking remember that it's limited something differential. Uh so what it does is the the wheels. I think I will somebody tried to explain it for me. Let, um, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Because I don't know anything about drifting. But I think what it does is the the wheels rotate at a different. The wheels will rotate at a different speed each of them. So sometimes when I'm trying to take a when I'm trying trying to take like a small turn. So if I'm turning like this way, this wheel will rotate more than the outer wheel. So sometimes I'm trying to take a to take a right turn. Or a left turn, whatever. But whatever the inner wheel is, it's gonna speed more. Like sort of like speeding a little bit more, and then that's when the car starts jumping a little bit. Like I said, the first time I freaked out, but once people explained me actually what it was, they told me, "Oh, it's LSD. It's just for drifting, blah blah." And then they knew about it because my parking brake. I will show you guys actually. My parking brake. It's a little bit different. So this one, and then for it to work, so I pull it down right. And then if I pull it up, it won't hold. I have to, I have to, let me show you guys if I can more. I have to pull this one forward and pull it up in order for it to work. And push this one down and it will work. It, it will work, but like this, it won't, it won't stay like a roller parking lot, right? So that's when they were like, yeah, this car was definitely meant for the trip than I believe from the previous owner. And actually, the car is it's not bad itself in shape. It's actually pretty good. The engine is pretty good. So I, I'm pretty sure the previous owner actually took good care of the car uh, somehow, some way. So the number six that I know I already mentioned in the previous video, but it's the, um, again, I was going to specify on the whole, uh, on just the car itself whenever the car is stuck. But I didn't find enough things that I didn't like because I actually like this car a lot. So I'm, I'm taking, I'm doing everything that comes out to market with the car and everything, you know. So number six, it be the shift knob and the steering wheel. I don't have anything against them. That like I like, they're pretty cool looking and everything. It's just like my hand sweats a lot. So if I if I hold the steering wheel, like I'm sorry, if I if I hold the shift knob for more than a minute because I like to rest my hand on the shift knob, it starts to sweat a lot. Same with the steering wheel, the way I drive is I usually have my hand right here and that's how I drive. That's just the way that I drive or I have it right here on the side. So if I'm driving, don't like, usually when it's hot, but most of the time my hand starts to sweat. So I won't feel it, but then I will move my hand and it'd be like wet in the, the part where I had my hand on, my hand be like really sweaty. Um, it never happened to me in my previous steering wheels. So I'm not sure what's the reason it does that. Um, I know the steering wheels maybe because it's rubber or plastic or something. I don't know. I don't know if it's better. Um, I can you can you can see it. But this one I know because it's just like metal. That that that's what happens. But that was my number six. Number seven, it's gonna be the paint. So this is I don't think it was a previous owner. I believe it was a dealership. Cause the dealership, when I took a look at the pictures online, it looked pretty good because you know you can tell they clean the car and they put it in the showroom. But I asked for more pictures from the uh, guy who sold the, the guy that was selling the car to me. And they had the car sitting outside in the lot. And then you can tell the car got rain on and they never actually washed it. Maybe the closest thing they got, the car got washed for was like just pressure washer with a, uh, with a hose or something. But it has a lot of water marks and damage on it. For example, 
this mirror right here i didn't see that one in the picture so that that, that one came off and the paint definitely came off um i don't know exactly what happened here but i don't know if you can tell the um the carlos painting here and they tried to paint much or something different type of paint i don't know if this was the leadership or the previous owner um i believe it was the previous owner i don't think they should do something shitty like that and it has like more spots like for example in the spoiler i don't know you guys can tell but it has like you know it has watermarks all over the car like right now it looks pretty clean because i used a fucking toro wax or something i don't remember the name of the brand to wash a car and actually somehow clean it better but for example this one you can tell see i don't know you can tell right there they that that's gonna take a minute to come off and what else yeah so all the pain is it's uh it, it's still you can still save it but it has a lot of damage to it uh it still looks clean again but it's just like you have the little spots that you actually pay attention to the paint you will be able you will be able to see the the spots right now i just washed the car like maybe an hour ago and it's a bit sunny so it makes the car look pretty clean all oh, the bumper as well too this is their paint that i don't like and then i noticed that the bumper used to be blue because i think they just over spray on top of that paint which i don't think i don't think that's a good idea number eight will be just the the body of the car itself i feel i like wider lower cars that's just my preference um i know this is not a gtr i know this is uh i don't know if you guys knew but it's not a gtr for the people who don't know it's a gtt or gt25 st i believe that's the whole name on it on the title which is i believe that's the closest thing that you can get to gtr again i make mistakes so correct me if i'm wrong i know there's gonna be like those keeper warriors are gonna be like oh you're dumb you don't know like what car you don't even know the car that you drive so this is my first nissan i'm starting to learn about it um but I know, I know it's a R34, right? Just kidding. I know more than that about my car. But I don't like the fact that, like, if you compare it to a GTR, the GTR is wider on the rear fenders and the front fenders as well. And that's the other thing, the other thing that I don't like because it makes my car look skinny. I, I'm gonna show you how, what I'm talking about. So if you look the car from the side, it looks pretty nice. Just like a basic R34, right? But if you actually go from the back, it's really skinny it's not wide at all maybe this like so the r34 i mean the gtr this right here comes down just like this one but it goes wider to probably i believe it's about an inch so i will come out like around this much and and it, it makes a big difference trust me though so i have parked my car next to an actual gtr and the GTR somehow, some way, looks bigger, wider, and meaner, like a lot. Like you can actually tell the difference with no problem. And I've seen it happen with the R33s and the R34s. The R32s can, like, can pull it off a little bit. They look the same as the GTR. But R33s and R34s, GTTs or GTSTs, compared to an actual GTR, you can actually tell the difference. And somehow they look bigger and wider, like big. Like you can act like, when I, when I say that, it's like you can actually tell the difference right and you can tell from the front as well because the gtr fenders the front fenders as well they're wider they probably come out to like maybe around that a little bit more i compared to the gtr and then you can tell because my front bumper is an actual gtr front bumper uh they actually it actually came off from an actual gtr so you can tell you can tell more on this side how much they had to tuck it in so this bumper is supposed to be sitting it's sitting right here so this bumper is supposed to be sitting probably around here so you can tell they had to bend the bumper in this one was actually pretty ghetto done uh just to make it feel with the gt gtt fenders um so that that's that was number eight just how wide the, the, the car is not as wide as i would like it to be of course it's gonna change with time but right now i still feel like the car doesn't look as wide as i wanted it to be it looks pretty skinny so number nine it's gonna be the wheels so this is something they i'm still debating back and forth like when i saw the, the wheels in the pictures and they look nice 
but like they didn't i don't know you guys catch my grip so like i like them but i don't at the same time like there's days i'm like they're not that bad they actually look nice and there's days i'm just like nah i need to get new wheels so let me show you my wheels more in detail so what's like turn out see you can see my car looks pretty clean with the sun because the sun is hitting it so all the paint looks pretty fucking amazing but my wheels this is the wheels that i'm running with um I'm gonna be honest, I've never seen this brand before, but I see this really popular out here in Japan. I see in on almost every uh, Skyland this out here. Uh, this is a GTT or like different cars that are owned by Japanese locals, not by American. I really, I really see by Americans, but I see that a lot on Japanese cars. They, they use this type of wheel. Uh, apparently, some dude, I was talking to some dude about it, he knows about them, and he says that the brand is pretty popular. Um, the people actually look for the brand so this is the wheels that I got I don't know if it's gonna clear a little bit or not but this ones are 17s in the front and 17s in the back and, and the front and 17s in the back as well Only th I think I would have liked them better if they would be 18s and they would be deep in I don't know what you're talking. I don't know you guys like know what I'm talking about. So instead of being like how they are, like to to the lip, like instead of coming out, they would go in, and they would be 18s and a little bit wider. Um, and I probably would have liked them way way better because I know one of the wheels that I like is from Cosmos. It has kind of like the same design as well as this one, but they go in, like they go dip in, and they look pretty badass. I've seen in a few Skylines, and they look pretty good. Um, and the tires as well so i don't know why most of the cars when i buy them with the tires they come most of the time they come with stretch tires this one has a stretch si stretch tires as well especially in the front the front they're like way more stretched than the back i believe so in the front i believe i'm running 215s and in the back i'm running i believe it's 225s or 245s one of both uh 225s but i know for example in this school i could if i was myself i'd probably be so it's running 225s i'll probably be running like 245s on this one just to make it look nice front is, is running 215s i'll probably be running like 225s or so to make it look better because i don't like the look of stretch tires i don't know the previous owner did it just because it helps better with drifting or like something was hitting the fenders but the wheels themselves like I like them, but I don't. So that's why I listen, list them, and that's why I put them on on number nine. But I don't know. Sometimes, like I said again, sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. Uh, but they're not bad. And last one, number ten, will will be the seats. Um, there is really nothing wrong with them. They're actually comfortable. They, they actually like you know I can relax and, see, and they help me somehow tie uh, to the car but I just don't like how they look so let me see so they just look like a regular car seat I know it's it's not it's it's I have a I have a, a GTT so I should not have no like fancy uh, racing wheels racing wheels I'm um, no racing seats I fucked up on that that's my bad racing seats but I mean they hold you like my body I'm like 5'7 so they, they fit around about right and then when I take like short turns or something they can hold you a little bit not too tight but they they hold you somehow some way right but I just don't like the design they look too I feel like they're too too like thick and uh I just to be honest I just really don't like the look of them and I'm, I'm definitely thinking of upgrading for something else uh, maybe a spark or something but uh, they're gonna be definitely able to adjust on how I want it I don't want a bucket seats I actually want seats that I can you know comfort for a daily driven but this one's I just I just don't like the look of them and this one came in dirty I don't know what to drop in there but after I cleaned it up it didn't come off and I mean there's a little peak of interior can see how my car looks from the interior but that being number 10 i'm gonna add something else to it the best cars i live in beautiful okinawa japan so these cars out here tend to get a lot of rust so skylands is one of the the r34 this is one of the favorites this path to get rust 
So, and there's more spots in here. Uh, so inside of the hood, there's a specific spot, I can't remember where. And then they, one of the guys that I know who sell, buys and sells car, cars was telling me that if you remove this, there is rust spots there a lot. I just was a car today, so it looks pretty clean to you, if you ask me. I really liked it. So, that's the thing. That was 10 things I don't like about the car. Just the Cortez car itself, not the actual model. And see you guys in a different video.